Dr. Nathan Wang, and today I'll be talking about tibiofemoral osteoarthritis, a nasty villain. The most common presentation of osteoarthritis of the knee is involvement of the tibiofemoral joint, the space between the femur, the upper leg bone, and the tibia, the larger of the two lower leg bones. These are the two surface areas that contain the largest amount of hyaline cartilage inside the knee. Hyaline cartilage is the harder of the two types of cartilage within the knee. Hyaline cartilage caps the ends of the long bones inside the joint, while fibrocartilage, a softer, more pliable cartilage, is represented by the medial and lateral menisci of the knee. These are semicircular pieces of cartilage that give added protection to the hyaline cartilage when it comes to shock absorption, gliding, and rotation. Symptoms of osteoarthritis of the knee typically consist of stiffness, swelling, buildup of joint fluid, and tenderness along the joint line. Over time, the ability to bend and straighten the knee will be compromised as well. The diagnosis can be suspected clinically by history and physical examination. It can be confirmed by positive changes seen on standing knee x-rays. Magnetic resonance imaging, though, is much more sensitive to changes of osteoarthritis of the knee, which will consist of cartilage defects, bone edema, meaning swelling, and fluid. The typical treatment regimen is aimed at pain relief and maintenance of function. If the patient is overweight, weight loss is a must. Regular exercise consisting of low impact aerobic exercise, resistance exercise, and stretching are components of a common sense program for a patient with osteoarthritis of the knee. Addition of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs taken either orally or given as a topical agent may also be used. Removal of excessive joint fluid followed by injections of glucocorticoids, cortisone, are helpful for symptomatic relief. Glucocorticoids, though, have a deleterious effect on articular cartilage and should be used sparingly no more often than three times per year in a given joint. Patients may also benefit from visco supplement injections. These are substances consisting of hyaluronic acid, which mimics the characteristics of normal joint fluid. These injections can also help provide symptomatic relief. All injections need to be administered using ultrasound guidance to ensure accuracy. Now let's talk about the S word. Surgery is defined as being cartilage sparing or cartilage sacrificing. Cartilage sparing procedures involve osteotomy, removing a wedge of bone in order to line the joint uh, straighter. This is used in young adult patients to buy time. Cartilage sacrificing procedures refer to joint replacement. The trend recently has been for patients to get these operations done at a younger age. The downside is that these surgeries are associated with a small but real risk of severe complications including infection, blood clots, and death. An option that is being proven to be an alternative is use of autologous stem cells, a patient's own stem cells to help sustain and possibly regrow cartilage in an osteoarthritic knee. I invite you to contact us for a free portfolio of information on how stem cells can help you if you have osteoarthritis. You'll discover more details about the procedure and most importantly, results. Thanks for watching.